In this part, we'll review the CSS required to bind the application UI. If you haven't done so, I'd recommend checking out the video or material about CSS integration in Codename 1, as this section assumes it's something that you are familiar with. The constants selector is a special case for theme constants. Normally, include native ball must be true, but in this case, we have a layered theme, and setting this to false works around some issues. The renderer show numbers ball flag hides numbers in the list renderer, which you normally should define if you use lists. For most themes, container and label are transparent, but not in all themes, so it's important to define these. Zero padding and margin are also very important for a container. They should be there by default, but this makes sure. Other than that, we just set a decent font for the label. The only entry for form sets the background color of the form. We can leave the defaults in place. The title UI ID makes sure the title is transparent, but most importantly, it disables a border that might be applied to that UI ID by the native theme. It also enforces center alignment, which is the default in iOS, but not on Android. The command and menu color is set through these two UI IDs. I mentioned before that the area here is a special component that abstracts the view of the underlying image. This component is of the same color as the form color with no margin. So we will get the visual effect of the buttons peaking below the image. We place the title image that we cut out before in the background on top with a scale to fill option. This allows us to fill up available space and possibly overflow from the sides, top or bottom. The order section on top uses a round rectangle border, which in CSS is defined as a pill border. Notice the generous amount of padding to push the border, so it won't seem cramped. Also notice that the right padding isn't even. The reason for that is the shadow of the round border that is technically a part of the border. Since the shadow is cast to the bottom right, we need more padding on those sides. The shopping cart icon uses a regular round border. It's the same border type as the pearl border in codename 1, but in CSS they are defined differently. Notice the usage of margin to push the border from the right side to distance it from the right edge of the form. The list renderer is opaque by default, so we need to specify it as transparent. In the design, the text is slightly translucent, but that's a bit expensive and makes the text too hard to read. Instead, I chose to just give it a grayish color, which produces a similar effect without performance implications and better readability. I also had to align the text to the center as it's aligned to the left by default and that looks weird in the carousel mode. The selected version of the renderer is white and appears in the center. The positioning of the selected element and its behavior 
are determined in the code. The title of each entry is determined here. I use a decent font and size, although in a later revision, I made the one larger, which improved the design. I copied the color of the text from the PSD file for the body and used a thinner font to differentiate from the title. The border of the buttons is a nine piece image border. I defined it in the theme itself with the GUI tool as I found that to be easier and more reliable. That might be due to personal habit as I'm not used to CSS. I used some padding to space out the content of the button. A common trick to implementing a separator line is to use one pixel padding with an opaque or translucent color. That's what I did here. I also added three millimeter padding on both sides to make sure the separator spans correctly in this case. Moving on to the checkout UI, most of the details in this page are relatively simple. The one thing that's slightly different but reasonably obvious is the right alignment of the price total entry. The checkout button derives from the add to border button and increases the size, padding and margin of everything. Using inheritance in this way is valuable as it allows us to reuse a design element and thus save RAM in cases like this where a nine piece border is used. The pieces we cut for the recipe background were cut into a nine piece border in the theme designer. Here we define the padding and margin. The padding is required so the text won't exceed the boundaries of the nine piece image and the margin helps us space the component from the edges. Notice the top bottom margins here are, are zero. So the two separate pieces can touch. <laughs>